Let's start with what happened on October 7th. Mm -hmm. Do you endorse that? In fact, I find it unfair that advocates for Palestine are first forced to preemptively condemn acts of violence uh, before their platform is considered legitimate. It plays into Islamophobic tropes. Look into those eyes because you're looking into the eyes of evil, quite possibly demonic. Dr. Phil, though, is one of the ones who seems to have uh, really taken the red pill and pushed back against the corporate overlords who have continued to push a propaganda script for him. In fact, not only have we seen him push back on the border issues and the transgender issues, and we've got two videos that show that. In fact, we'll uh, hopefully put them in the link right below here, or, or maybe we can use that cool card thing, Kevin. You know, the YouTube cards. If you'd like to see our other explorations of Dr. Phil pushing back on the view, on transgender issues, and on the border, just click on the link right there in the card. There, I forced you to do it now. See if that makes a difference. He's already done that, but now he's gone one step further. On his show yesterday, he had two pro-terrorist, pro-Hamas students from the University of Michigan. Oh, I'm so embarrassed to say they're from Michigan. And watch how this fiery exchange went when he was not letting them get away with their moral equivocation over terrorism in the state of Israel. On college campuses everywhere. And joining me now are seniors from the University of Michigan at Selma and Zainab. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Anything you want to say in response to what's been said so far? Well, absolutely. Um, I believe that this conversation is being uh, contextualized in the wrong way. I believe that it's being discussed um, under the notion that this is a religious war, that this is a conflict between Arabs and Jews, um, and that Hamas is central to Palestinian suffering uh, or Palestinian resistance. Um, and I think I want to give a bit more historical context uh, of why we're actually fighting for Palestine. When we say that we're pro-Palestine, we're not advocating for any military group. We're advocating for the total liberation of all oppressed peoples. I get the contextualization, okay. but I also get a lot of buzzwords strung together. But I'm asking you what you think and you believe. Let's start with what happened on October 7th. Mm -hmm. Do you endorse that? I reject the the premise of that question, because I don't believe that the person asking me that question has the moral authority to ask it until they first and foremost condemn the violent formation of Israel and the ensuing Palestinian deaths. And in fact, I find it unfair that advocates for Palestine are first forced to preemptively condemn acts of violence uh, before their platform is considered legitimate. It plays into Islamophobic tropes. Wow, that is a really well memorized and well rehearsed. And this woman, honestly, look at her. I want you to look. Look into those eyes, because you're looking into the eyes of evil, quite possibly demonic. This woman needs help. But lost in that scripted response to avoid a basic question, which is, do you condemn the acts of October 7th? Lost in there, and you may have missed it, is this attempt to refuse to actually accept the premise of the question because... If you accept the right of the state of Israel to exist in the first place, you are in no moral position to even ask the question. That's what she just said. And that sort of gives away the story for the so-called uh, pro-Palestinian side of this equation. Everything that we do in response to the existence of the country of Israel is fair game. And you cannot morally condemn or judge any act, even if it means burning babies alive. Anything that we do is legitimate in response to the existence of a Jewish state in the Middle East. That's it. That's who they are. That's exactly what they believe. And all of the politicians and the media figures and the people on late night talk shows, and yes, that sanctimonious prick, Jose Andres, with his odious remarks about the state of Israel yesterday, suggesting they're deliberately targeting innocent people for death. All of the people who side with this 
evil demonic person, you're all the same. I'm sorry. This is who's leading you. This is what side you're on right now. There are a few things in life that are very cut and dry. And it's so funny that everyone says, well, it's a very tangled and challenging issue, the whole question of Israel and the Palestinians in the Middle East. It's, there's a lot of gray area. No, there really isn't. There really, really isn't. You're either on her side or you're not. All right, but there's more here. I just wanted to jump in. And it's not like Dr. Phil needs my help. Just wait till you see him. Islamophobic trope. Yes. Well, let's just get down to right and wrong. Okay. Uh, and if you don't want to answer the question, that is an answer. Do you condemn what happened on October 7th? Of course, we do not justify murdering any innocent civilians. But again, the framework of the question makes it makes it seem as if the situation is the result only because of October 7th, when there have been several massacres for decades leading up to this. So when we have been the recipients of that violence and, and we are first asked to condemn violence, I find that there is a sense of hypocrisy in those questions when our suffering is not being recognized. And the first thing we're asked is to condemn. What do you think Israel was going to do when Hamas cuts a hole in the fence and comes over the top and kills 1,300 people? What did you think they should have done? I think they have every right to go in combat with Hamas, but I don't think they have the right for 92% of the death count to be civilians. If they burn an infant in a crib, do you see that as a moral equivalent to a collateral death from a bomb being dropped as an act of war? They have explicitly targeted civilian areas that have been marked as civilian areas. Israel has the registry for every person in Gaza. And if that's where the enemy is hiding, do they have a right no, to attack them? No, they do not have the right to kill. There are some things that are just fundamental human decency. And when I ask you if what happened on October 7th is something you condemn and you say, well, you have to look at that by looking at hundreds of years of conflict. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's either right or it's wrong, and it was wrong, and I don't need a hundred years of conflict to know it was the wrong. The fact of the matter is that Hamas, yes, did take innocent life. Why did Hamas take away innocent life? Why was Hamas platformed? Why was Hamas funded? Why is Hamas empowered to take away something. innocent life? Let Are me tell you something. When somebody comes over a fence mm -hmm. and goes into someone's house mm -hmm. and burns their infant mm -hmm. in its crib, I don't give a damn why they did so it. It's wrong. Oh, man. There, there's more to this, too. But that's... Thank you. Thank you. This is. Can, can we just cut through the crap on these things? The, the problem is she never hears that. She never hears pushback because when she's at the University of Michigan, thank you very much, God. Oh, my Wolverines, I, I ache for them that, that this is happening on the campus in Ann Arbor. She never hears any pushback from a professor. And if you dare to push back as a student, well, good luck, man, because you will be targeted. You learn when you're debating or arguing with people like this who literally have ties or support terrorist murderers and equivocate on their behalf, you, you know, unless you're packing, unless you're ready to defend yourself, keep your mouth shut. And so they just go, go and do whatever they want. They can march in the streets of Dearborn or in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They can march in the streets of DC. They can, they can do whatever they want because no one's going to dare push back on them because, well, they're in bed with freaking terrorists. And so they're given this long leash. They appear on, on other television shows, on cable news shows, and like, oh, well, that's, oh, that's, I'm glad that you're passionate about these things. Or worse, or worse, you've got the vice president of the United States and mashed potato brains president of the United States actually not only platforming them, but actually legitimizing their evil, evil perspective on what is, again, a very easily black and white moral issue of our time. There's even more. Now, you saw the gentleman who was sitting with Dr. Phil He's actually the son of the leader of Hamas. Yeah. But he has defected. 
And he's actually said, no, 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 this is really evil, what they're doing. I know, I'm his son. I know exactly what this is about. This is slaughtering the Jews. That's what this is about. In the name of Allah. I've read it that the charter of Hamas is to eliminate the Jewish race, beginning with Israel, but not stopping with Israel, wiping them off the face of the earth. Is that true? This is true, but it does not end there. Now we have the problem of the pro-Palestine who are actually given Hamas cover. They are participants in the crime. In fact, since October 7, I personally don't differentiate between Hamas and what so-called Palestinians. Because actually there is no Palestinians. There are uh, tribes. There is a tribe of Hamas, and there is a tribe of the Islamic Jihad, and there is a tribe of Khalil, and there is a tribe of Nablus. And each one has different uh, interests, and all of them are conflicted. If they did not have Israel as the common enemy, they would kill each other. This is the reality you of what so-called Palestine. You don't know what Palestine is. Actually, in fact, the kefiyah that you are wearing, mm -hmm. this is just a statement to show that you really lack the authenticity to represent the case. And what so-called the cause, mm -hmm. you know, this is a human problem. So you just- The cause must die. I think enough is enough. And now it's proven and you are helping Hamas to prove it to the world that Palestine depends on the destruction of the state of Israel. And this is not acceptable, and we are not going to agree to it. And I tell you something, for the next 10 or 20 years, the Palestinian people will pay the bill that Hamas is caused today, and most likely in blood. To you, Hamas and Palestinians are, are the same, they're one and the same. After October 7, yes, there is no difference. Really? The vast majority of the Palestinian people support Hamas. Really? This is a fact. This is proven by statistics and your silence now. You are not even, you cannot even condemn Hamas and say that what they did on October 7 was an act of a savage group. You don't have that power. I said I condemn On what authority question. do you speak? You only speak on the authority of Hamas propaganda. No, I'm... So why do you say that I'm speaking on the authority of Hamas propaganda? Because if I'm you were a decent human being, you can say that the thousands were killed on October 7. That was a crime against humanity. It was a genocide. Uh, uh, God bless that man. Allah bless his man. And yes, go to Dr. Phil Primetime and subscribe to their channel. While you're there, subscribe to us as well. But uh, they deserve it. That's some great, great stuff right there. And you saw that, that, that I, I am haunted by that woman's eyes and by her face and the evil that you can see churning around in her brain. Of course, this man is right. He knows he's literally, he's Palestinian. Unlike these pampered American kids who are protesting on college campuses with their kefiyah, they're wearing it like it's some sort of fashion accessory. It's the symbol of murder. Uh, it's uh, amazing. And by the way, it's, it's so funny. You equate the Palestinian people with Hamas? How do you, well, first of all, as he said, she couldn't even condemn Hamas, and she's not even living over there. She's here in pampered Ann Arbor, Michigan, and she can't bring herself to condemn Hamas? How are we not supposed to think that anyone who aligns themselves as Palestinian is supportive of Hamas, number one? But number two, excuse me, ma'am, I know, geez, you only are going to college, so you probably don't understand these things, but can you please explain how Hamas got to power in Gaza? I mean, how did they become the official ruling government in Gaza? Do you know? The Palestinians elected them. That's the only reason they're in charge and in power, is that the Palestinians, you, you equate the Palestinians with Hamas? Well, if the Palestinians voted for them and put them in power and said, yes, we want you to be in charge, you speak for us, then, well, yeah, we kind of do make that equivocation. Thank you very much. Good for you, Phil. Good for you, Dr. Phil. Keep it up. But you can actually make a difference by having these conversations. Could you please invite Matt Walsh on and do that whole transgender episode again? Because you, you didn't really do what you should have done. Also, what has Oprah told you recently? If you had a conversation, I would love to interview Dr. Phil. I'd love to find out how his relationship is with Oprah these days.